This video corresponds with lesson two in unit 4C, which will talk about how to graph a quadratic function in vertex form. You're gonna see in graphing something out of vertex form, it's very similar to graphing a quadratic that's in standard form. The only difference, I think you can figure out with the keyword vertex, the way that these equations are written, you can easily pull out the vertex without having to do any special formula, like in standard form, having to do any plug and chug, as long as you can recognize what variables represent the vertex and where it's located in the problem. So these couple of examples I'm gonna go through uh, are related to the first two examples from your note packet. So let's take a look at the equation at the very top of the screen here. Y equals A times X minus H squared plus K. A we've dealt with before. The A is going to represent the value that tells us how our parabola is going to look, whether it points up or down, whether it's wide, whether it's narrow, that sort of thing. X and Y, like any equation ever, is going to represent all the possible points on the parabola. But what we need to focus on are the H and the K. H and K are going to represent the vertex. So you'll notice in the formula the H has a minus sign attached to it, while the K has a positive sign. What that is going to mean is when we pull out those numbers to represent the vertex, essentially what you need to think of is this. Because of the minus sign with the H, the number that you see in the parentheses attached to the X, you need to pull out the opposite version of it. The fact that we have a positive sign with the K after the, I guess at the end of the equation here, that means whatever sign you see is what you're going to use. So we'll walk through a couple of examples here so you can see what I'm talking about with that. But once we find that vertex, we are going to find all the same information we found before. Our axis of symmetry, find a couple of pairs of points, establish if there's a maximum or minimum, etc. So let's go ahead and take a look here at this first example. Y equals X plus 1 squared minus 4. First thing we're going to do is establish what the A value is. So again, we have a visual cue as to what our graph should look like. The A value is always in front of the parentheses. We don't see a number there, so that means there's an invisible 1 which means our parabola is going to open upward because it's a positive A value. Now we're going to go ahead and rip out our vertex. So again, since this is written in this particular format, the vertex is right there for us. No formula required. To get our vertex, the X coordinate of the vertex is attached to the X value inside the parentheses. So again, I referenced before how in the formula, it's X minus the value. When you see a minus sign in the formula, you have to pull out the opposite of what you see. So the fact that it says x plus 1 means I'm going to pull out a negative 1 to get my x value of the vertex. The y value is the k. The y value of the vertex, I should say, is that k value that's attached at the end. And whatever you see there, we don't change the sign. We're going to leave it alone. Our vertex from this equation is at negative 1, negative 4. So I'm going to go right ahead here and plot that and we have our vertex. No formula, you just have to be able to recognize it when it's written in this, in this fashion. So from here, we're gonna go ahead and do all the same steps. So we're gonna go ahead and put in our vertical axis of symmetry right through our vertex like we did in standard form. And the equation, again, to represent that, it's x equals because it's a vertical line, negative one, because again, it's running through the vertex, that's the x part of our vertex. Now we're going to go ahead and find a couple of other pairs of points, starting with the y-intercept, because again, the nice thing about finding the y-intercept means we start at zero and we plug that into our problem. Same thing as you did with standard form. Use your calculator, use your head, whatever you want to use, but all we're doing is substituting that zero in and just doing some quick math with that. So if I plug in zero, I'll get a y-value of negative three. And I'm going to go ahead and reflect it. Again, since that point is one space to the right of my line, we'll go one space to the left. So that symmetrical corresponding point is negative 2, negative 3. Now we're going to go ahead and find one more pair of points. Again, when you do this, you want to pick an x value. You can technically pick any x value that you want. But you want to pick an x value that's close to your line of symmetry so you have a better chance of getting something that fits on your graph. So I'm going to go ahead and pick one because it's about the next closest thing I can choose. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and plug 1 into my problem, and it'll spit out an answer of 0. I'll reflect it two spaces over the opposite way, which will put me at the symmetrical point of negative 3, comma 0. I now have two pairs of points and a vertex. 
So then I'll go ahead and draw my parabola. I can establish, since it's pointing upward, that means it has a minimum because it has a low point. The lowest it goes on the Y scale is at negative four. And that Y value is at an X value of negative one. And again, that comes just directly from the vertex. It's just another way to phrase and interpret what the vertex actually does. So again, with this vertex form, the biggest change in what we're doing here is it's written a little bit differently and it's set up differently. If it is set up in this format, you can easily rip out the vertex without having to do a lot of work for it. The rest of the steps are still the exact same thing. A lot of just plugging in numbers, figuring out what points we can get, and then reflecting them over the line of symmetry. If we look at this second example here, again, this is the second example from the notes that go with this section, it's the exact same idea. So we're gonna take a look at y equals negative x plus two squared plus five. So the a value is, again, out in front of the parentheses, it's negative one. That's going to give us the visual cue that it's going downward because it is a negative A value. So again, when we start drawing our points, you should kind of see that. So once again, biggest thing is we need to rip out the vertex based on the way it's set up. So my vertex is going to come from these two values here, the two that's in parentheses and the five that's after it. The number inside the parentheses, again, because of the formula being X minus the H value, we take out the opposite of it. So instead of taking out a two, we're going to take out a negative two. The number after the parentheses, we don't worry about it. We keep it the same. So our vertex is going to be at negative 2, comma 5. So we're going to go ahead and plot that. And go ahead and put in our line of symmetry after it. So once again, we have a line of symmetry, x equals negative 2, running right through the vertex. And now we're going to go ahead and find some points. So once again, y-intercept, we're going to plug in a 0. So again, when you punch this into your calculator, just make sure, especially if there's things in front of the parentheses, make sure you enter that into your calculator as well if you're not going to tabulate this here in your head or on paper. So we're going to go ahead and plug in 0, and that will give me an answer of 1. And again, I'll reflect it. Two spaces to the other side, I'm getting negative four one. That would be my symmetrical point. Now I'm gonna go ahead and pick once again another point. So again, I'm gonna pick something close to the line. I'm gonna just pick negative one because we haven't used it yet, and it's even closer to my line of symmetry. So once again, I plug that in and I will get four. Then I'll reflect it. That'll give me at the point negative three, comma four. Once again, two pairs of points and my vertex, and I've got my parabola. So once again, I can establish, hey, it has a maximum because it has a, it has a, a peak to it, if you will, it has a top point. The maximum occurs at a Y value of five, while the X value that corresponds with that is negative two. So that's how you graph something that's written in vertex form. Again, you have to be able to recognize when something is in vertex form. Standard form is going to be that x squared plus or minus x plus or minus a number. It's a very generic way that we can write things. Vertex form is a little bit more specific. You'll see kind of how it's set up with the parentheses. They get squared. Something being added or subtracted to it. It has its own distinctive format. So again, it's a matter of just matching up and identifying what format you have and how you can pull out that information. Most, though, of what you do afterwards is plugging in points, find some different X values to get some different Y values, and just getting things that fit on the graph. So that's how you graph something, uh, how you graph a quadratic function in vertex form.